Good morning, students, colleagues, seniors, juniors. It's been a long wish of mine to be associated with the 10 minute CME. I think there is no better day, there is no better occasion than World Kidney Day 2021. Uh, this is a strikingly different theme that the World Kidney Day Steering Committee has declared, and that is for the year 2021 to be uh, declared as living well with kidney disease. This is a completely new concept. It is a radically new concept because during our study days and when we were MD and DM students, CKD has always been considered as a diagnosis wherein if you don't have transplant option, it's more or less like a wastebasket diagnosis wherein we are always asked as to how can you pursue this as a carrier because every day you are seeing patients suffering and suffering and suffering unless and until you have a transplant prospect which many patients don't have. It is in that background that this whole year or living well with kidney disease assumes uh, great proportions. It's something which we've always been actually wanting to say that there are things which we can actually do to ultimately enhance the quality of life and more than that to ultimately enhance life participation. So kidney disease patient, a CKD patient, there are so many, many things that we actually need to look into. And if we do look into that in depth, probably we can make a lot of difference. I would probably like to put it as A, B, C, D and something up and above all that. When you see a CKD patient, the first A which is of great importance is access because that is where we lose the game many a times because we don't create an access on time. Then the patient lands up with an emergency. We put a central vein, then that leads on to something else, an infection and then further infection, etc, etc. So to secure an access at the earliest, as and when the patient is going into stage four or five is of paramount importance and the access that is preferred always first is the AV fistula. So access creation is really, really important. And that is, I think, the first thing that you need to advise the patient as and when you see the patient and refer them to the right person to create an access. Second A would probably be anemia. Many a times we see patients having so many issues because anemia per se can enhance your heart failure. Anemia per se can actually create LVH and can produce so many, so many things. So to achieve a target hemoglobin of about 10 gram per deciliter with the help of your iron supplements and with the help of your erythropoietin is really, really important. And that is something which we need to highlight. And anemia per se can actually be a big factor in living well with a kidney disease because a person with anemia in whichever stage of kidney disease he is, he is never going to be actually able to come to any kind of a normalcy. So anemia and access creation are very, very important. B for me stands for bone mineral disease, which is a huge thing in kidney disease and many a times underlooked because we tend to feel that patients who don't have transplant prospects, they are essentially going to go downhill. But that is not the case to classify the patient properly as to whether he belongs to a high bone turnover category or a low bone turnover category. Low bone turnover category patients, the ones who are having normal or low parathormone are at extreme risk for calcification and complications due to calcification and even coronary disease per se because of that. So to take special care of them, to cut off the calcium which actually inhibits the PTH it is very very important to have a low calcium dialysate all that is very crucial so to identify bone mineral disease and to classify a patient as to whether he is a high bone turnover or a low bone turnover is extremely extremely important the second B that I actually stand for the second B that I actually want to discuss is blood pressure blood pressure control to a very tight degree in a patient with CKD is not that required, especially when the patient is at the end stage. So probably to achieve optimal blood pressure is what we are looking for, the patient with end stage kidney disease and to always see to it that the blood pressure doesn't shoot up more and to look for specific things when the patient is started on dialysis, like an intradialytic hypotension. And what we see very commonly in our practice during dialysis, intradialytic hypertension. So to always keep these two things in mind and accordingly, accordingly manage. C, stands for cardiac. So many a times you see the most common cause of death in patients with CKD is a cardiac event. And you know that there are so many, so many reasons. They have non-modifiable, non-traditional kind of new generation risk factors also, many of them, including this calcification, including this malnutrition, inflammation, atherosclerosis, and so many things. So it is imperative for us to actually keep a check on this, to be looking at echo first, and then if the patient is a transplant prospect, to definitely go ahead and do an angio and to give cardiac status a great, great deal of importance because we see so many, so many entities with respect to cardiac disease in CKD patients, including this calcification factor, including diastolic dysfunction. So to get a to good cardiology opinion and to keep cardiac things under check is of great, great importance in a patient with CKD. D stands for diuretic use as well as dry weight. Now, both these are actually speaking very, very important. If you look at diuretic use and dry weight, 
Diuretic use in CKD patients has to be very optimal because you can see many of the diuretics don't work well in CKD because uremic toxins tend to clog the tubule. So to measure the intra inferior vena cava diameter and to adequ may adequately start diuretics and to see to it that these diuretics are given properly and the patient is compliant to diuretics, keep looking at the intravascular volume as many times as you can and accordingly tapering the dose is of great importance. And once the patient starts dialysis to always be looking for dry weight because dry weight is a, is a very very important thing that is a weight below which if you actually keep the patient then he can go in for complications so to optimally calculate the dry weight and to keep achieving the dry weight at all times giving the patient enough kind of uh, advice on how to maintain the dry weight and see to it that he doesn't go for repeated repeated episodes of hypotension e stands for electrolytes Electrolytes are very, very important, especially you know the importance of potassium, you know the importance of phosphorus, you know the importance of calcium. In the acute setting, as all of you know, the most important thing that we are looking for is obviously potassium. And we know the food items which can actually increase your potassium. You also need to know that the, for a patient, hypo and hyperkalemia, both are extremely dangerous. We are often taught this rule of seven, which means that your serum plus dialysate potassium ongoing for dialysis should be approximately seven. So abiding by that and keeping that in mind, that's very, very, very important. For me, the king ion as far as CKD is concerned is not potassium, it is phosphorus. Because phosphorus has got this dirty dangerous habit of being able to convert normal endothelial cells into osteoblasts. So that is like kind of promoting calcium and phosphorus, calcium phosphorus products and basically leading on to calcification and calcification is a killer in CKD and calcification is a killer every time because it is almost something that is completely irreversible. So these A, B, C, D and E are not just the things that we are actually talking of. There are so many, many more things to it, but these are the most important things that you need to look into. But up and above this, I will put you and you would be the most important part and that you would be uremia. To look for uremia in a patient with end-stage renal disease is so vital and uremia can have manifest, I mean umpteen manifestations from a bad order to, to hyperpigmentation, to uremic gastritis, to uremic pericarditis, to uremic pruritus, anything, everything is possible due to uremia. So please keep that in mind. Any patient having any symptom due to uremia, uremia is an absolute indication for a dialysis to initiate dialysis at the earliest and always look for the dialyzer to ensure that you are using a new dialyzer to look for what are called flux in the dialyzer as well as to look for what is called KOA and KUF both are extremely different to basically be looking for this to see whether you have achieved optimum dialysis or adequate dialysis and keep changing the dialyzer frequently and to look for in simple terms what we call as the adequacy of dialysis. If a patient is not adequately dialyzed and especially if diffusion doesn't happen adequately there is extreme chances of him manifesting with different different uremic complications to keep a check on uremic complications to keep looking for adequacy of dialysis and to see that he is getting dialyzed adequately at all different 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 points in time. So this is, I think all these things come under the purview of the nephrologist per se. There are even more things which we can actually add on to this but I think this is what you need to be looking at as most most important. Even you can say acidosis is very important. There are so many things we have not actually added but of paramount importance I think would be these things. To set an access and to create an access and to secure an access at the earliest. To be very clear with the bone mineral profile, blood profile, cardiac status as well as diuretic use in the patient and then start dialysis on time before uremic symptoms set in and then to adequately look for dry weight as well as uremia in the patient and to watch the patient every time before he goes into a dialysis and preferably if possible to go for a thrice weekly dialysis and thus enhance his quality of life, ensure proper life participation and give him a feeling of confidence that he can actually move on. So this is what we need to think about in this particular kidney day and I probably feel that living well with kidney disease is a big message. It is a message that I think we have been waiting for kind of thing because it is no more a wastebasket diagnosis. CKD is something with, with the help of a good nephrologist can be managed and the patient being given more positivity to carry on with his life with as much resemblance as possible to normalcy. Thank you.